Welcome to Conversations with Paul Clarisi. I'm your host, Paul Clarisi, uh, and my guest for this program is running coach uh, Bill Squires. Um, I had the great fortune of sitting down with Coach for many, many hours uh, in writing his uh, authorized biography, Born to Coach. Um, and uh, we thought we'd sit here and have a discussion on some of his uh, highlights and things throughout his life. Uh, welcome, Coach. Appreciate Thank you too. being here. Um, I'd like to start with to let a lot of the viewers know uh, you were all American in Notre Dame and you run, ran many distances, half marathons, uh, half miles, marathons. But let's start with a lot of the things when you were a kid. You were born in 1932 with a malformed heart. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about that because I think the, the viewers would love to see what you had gone through uh, as a child. Uh, and some of your accidents too. You yeah. broke your nose your eye, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, to, st uh, to start off with my. Uh, my parents are very, very, you know, uh, first of all, my father was a, a, a commercial uh, fisherman mm. and uh, and he was, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, the electrical man on the ship. He was away for, uh, he'd be away for, uh, uh, you know, three weeks at, uh, at a time and be back for a week and then go out, you know, you know did and then go. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, at, at that time, I was like the uh, old, uh, oldest boy. And, and uh, you know, I, uh, he said, look, uh, Billy, you've got you know, uh, you to gotta run the house with, uh, with mom. I'm going to have to be away every three weeks, and I'm, then I'm only home for a week and a half. Yeah, that's tough. It was a tough, uh, it was a tough chore, but I mean, you know, that, that was okay. And my younger brother, two younger, uh, younger brother and sister, they were okay. Mm. You know, they, they, they felt the deal that, you know, and I made them feel that they, yeah, uh, they were big uh, timers and I'd write, you know, write them, you know, write up good, uh, good notes of how well they were, yeah. you know, so forth. To That's nice. Them. Appreciation. Yeah, appreciation. And the kids were good. Yeah. But, but, uh, but I remember you saying you felt tired and, uh, you didn't know, really know what was going on. And the doctors said to you, uh, mm -hmm. and your mother Flo, Florence to, uh, not do anything, no activity. You had to stay oh, home. Yeah. You were homeschooled yeah. really young. You, you yeah. missing education. But then finally, one of the doctors, you said, no, no, uh, we have to get some exercise to build this heart. It was a misdiagnosed heart. It ended up being one of your four valves. It was like very, very small, but yeah. they didn't diagnose it then. Yeah. So you were a little delayed a little bit, but then what did it feel like when the doctor finally said, no, have this kid go out and play? <laughs> well, the thing was, it was uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there were two doctors that were pals that came back and luckily they uh, ended up uh, in the Boston area, and and my case came up, and they go, uh, you know, uh, there's an athlete down there that's only a, a freshman, and he's flying like heck, mm -hmm. and his uh, and his mother, uh, 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 his mother, his father's at sea most of the time, and he's only home, you know, and 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 his mother said, I don't know, uh. uh uh, I, uh, the doctor said, uh, oh, he can play, don't worry. Mm. Uh, and she said, one doctor says, uh, I don't know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't, you yeah. know, one didn't agree, and the other one said, no, you know. Build uh, it up. Build it up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would say, uh, Omar, I, I don't run hard. We don't work hard. It, it's easy, you know. And I, uh, you know, and and uh, then then she'd come down and watch what we were doing, yeah. and and, and uh, she kind of, you know, she kind of uh, favored letting me, you yeah. know, letting me go. At the beginning, she 
was very leery. Well, I remember you saying that you, she'd push you around in a little baby carriage when you were older. Well, yeah. All these things, you homeschooled, you oh, couldn't go out yeah. and play. And yeah. then when you finally did, I mean, you finally did, it was on, on like unleashing, you know, the, the athlete in you, which was nice. And, yeah. And then you did your normal kid stuff. I remember you saying you broke your nose, you, you, you hurt your eye playing. Yeah. You ju you're jumping down and two by fours yeah. went up. And then there's one incident where you, you basically almost cut your foot off with an axe and Cub Scouts. Oh, yeah. Uh, but Everything. all those things, you uh, rebounded. You went through that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And then in Arlington High School, um, there's a nice picture here, coach of you with Doc McCarthy, your coach from Arlington. This is 1952, oh, yeah. outstanding award uh, there. Um, yeah. You said you, you did a lot of football and hockey, but Charlie Leveron, a uh, friend of yours, got you into running. How did he, get, did, how did he introduce you to running? Did he say... Hey, you'd be a better runner or it's a great, better sport. How did he get you into uh, running? Well, the thing was, uh, uh, you know, he was a kid that, uh, that you know, lived near me. Mm. And, and, uh, uh, and he, he kept saying, uh, Billy, you got to, uh, you got to, uh, you know, you got to, uh, uh, football is good. But he said, and hockey is good too. But he said, I think tr uh, you'd like track to get quicker. Yeah. And that'll make you Real fast. better. And I know that you're, yeah, I know that you're kind of quick because you, you've won a lot of those, you know, in, in, uh, in junior high races and in yeah. and, and the high school race, you, 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 the first year out, you ran for, you know, you ran for like uh, 450. And yeah. then, and he goes, and then I knew you were going to go, you know, even faster than that. You did improve. You, yeah. you improved very well. I mean, you you set the school indoor mile record at 422.6. Yeah. And the in, uh, outdoor mile record at 422.8. Yeah. And that was uh, obviously very good, but you kept improving yeah. so much so. And then I remember you saying, that a lot of the colleges were starting to uh, knock oh, on your yeah. door, so to speak. Oh, yeah. And of course, you chose Notre Dame. There's, yeah. there's the uh, young, fit, handsome, yeah. charming Coach Squires in Notre yeah. Dame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but talk a little bit about in your freshman year. Um, yeah. I mean, Notre Dame is uh, the academics alone. Yeah. Athletically, you couldn't match it and actually exceed a lot of the uh, cross country and track runners. Um, and improve as well with uh, Alex, the coach. Yeah. Uh, Alex Wilson, who is a, a yeah, Canadian a Olympian. Olympian. Uh, yeah. but talk a little bit about academics, because I know a lot of people, a lot of kids, uh, viewers who might be watching, also, they may struggle academically um, mm -hmm. to try to balance both. I mean, academics and sports, because athletes are held at a higher uh, level. You had to get with a 77 instead of a 70 or 75 academically. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. you were struggling. Explain a little bit of the struggles that led actually to you be, being mm -hmm. on probation, academic probation and stuff. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the big thing that, uh, that helped me was, uh, I was, uh, I was limited, you know, I was limited. I was not in the, uh, I, I was like in the, uh, uh, lower middle class, you know, uh, in the, uh, college division. So the the uh, the deal was, uh, uh, you know, I had a I had a uh, you know I had a, a hard time, and what they did was, uh, we had a we had a uh, in which we could uh, get extra help after uh, you know uh, after school, you know, mm. like after Tutoring. school tutoring. Uh, getting your papers typed, things like that, yeah, that help because right. you'd be practicing. Yeah. Um, but your you, your grades, you, you, the semesters you didn't make, match the grades, so you had to miss your sophomore cross country season. Yeah, I did for yeah. probation. Academically, you were still okay. Yeah. But uh, athletically, you couldn't. I couldn't. Um, yeah. So yeah. you turned. I remember you turned to Father Brennan, who did a lot to help you. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to hear a lot of stories about Notre Dame. Uh, a lot of the priests, the Jesuits, really help out the students, yeah. and it's true. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Father Brenham. He really, and you weren't even looking for someone, yeah. like as a mentor or to help. Yeah, but it just right. it just organically grew. Talk a little bit about Father Brenham. He was really important. Oh yeah, well, uh, Father understood that I, you know, I was a, uh, all you know, as a young kid, I was a daily communicant. 
He knew I used to go to mass mm. every day. I mean, no one told me that, but I looked at it uh, uh, as I went there. I'd, I'd ask God, you know, uh, uh, help me be a good, a better student, and uh, uh, and make sure that I'll concentrate more. And uh, and I kept saying, I'm not worried about the athletic end. I can take care of that. Yeah. But I, the academic end, I want to make sure I, uh, you know, I have my, gr you know, grades up because I don't want to miss classes. You know, so you know the first, uh, the the. the 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 first uh, sophomore year was not a good year mm. for me. Had a, had trouble, and then after uh, uh, after a bit, I I had a, an older uh, an older uh, 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 an older mentor, uh, as we say, that uh, was there that you know uh, had taken over. They had you know uh, you had uh, had a, a, a study. Mm. Th three days a week, if you want to take study it. groups, study groups. Yeah. So we'd sit there and and go through it, and all of a sudden, I learned how to be a better note taker, mm. and also be able to uh, formulate what uh, uh, you know what I should uh, keep my ears, you know, yeah. and That's eyes a lot. open. Yeah, and I uh, uh, and and. Uh, uh, it, it was a revelation that I, you know, uh, that I could I could follow, and and uh, my both parents, uh, you know, had gone to the uh, uh, in Canada up to the uh, uh, up up to the ninth grade, and that was it. Mm. You either were, you know, were that, and you went to the you went to the uh, uh, provincial college yep. local, and that was it. And then, and, and uh, you know, and that, that was college and, and- And you're at the higher echelon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Division one, high independent, I mean- Oh, yeah. Um, I remember you saying when you would walk into class and before you even sat down, they had, um, the professor would move these boards. Oh, yeah. That had all notes on it. All, all In done. addition to talking. So yeah. you would have to, as a student, write down what's on the boards and they moved. So there was more than oh, one yeah. in, behind oh, yeah. them and listen to what he's saying, take notes of what the professor's saying and what's on the board. Yeah. And you said you look at this going, I, yeah. I can't believe yeah. to do that. But to organize all that. Yeah. Um, one thing I thought was interesting is that um, you found a lot of neat side jobs at Notre Dame um, when you had that time off when you, the, during the uh, academic probation. Uh, you delivered cakes. I, I, you I, sold I, furniture and you helped the grounds crew among some of them. Yeah. Tell a little bit about the cake story, which is funny. One of the, a former... Uh, the current student at the time, a football player, was doing that. Well, the, the thing was, there were these two Greek uh, kids that uh, <clears throat> that came from, uh, you know, uh, Greek American kids, but, but from uh, their parents came from Greece, and they, you know, uh, uh, settled in the United States, and they were United States citizens, you know, uh, citizens, and went to school, and. Uh, uh, they said, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, Bill, uh, find the uh, cakes, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, we got a lot of help from this Father Brennan. Well, go and see, uh, you know, uh, this Father Brennan. So I, you know, I, you know. Well, he helped you academically, which was good. Yeah. Uh, that I recall. Um, the um, football player, I can't remember his name, maybe we won't say it who started with the, uh, he would find birth dates of uh, students and know when their birthdays were. And then he oh, would yeah. organize oh, getting yeah. birthday cakes yeah. for like $5 and stuff. And you picked up that business. I took so a to business speak. up. So that all was... your cakes would be in your dorm room. Yeah. And then to make it more efficient, you found uh, someone who worked in the office of the yeah, students. a woman. I had a. To, uh, I to, had a don't give any like names. They gave me the birthdays. They gave the birth dates of gave all that. The so you had a, like a spreadsheet back then. Yeah. Of <laughs> so so it was a uh, all I care, all I needed was the birthday right. dates of any. And you knock on doors for be, roommates. Yeah. Don't you want to buy a cake yeah. for so and so? We'll and put the, a name and on would, it. Would, <laughs> and the thing was, uh, uh, away I went. I decided what I, you know. But what, what you do is your parents would get a note home yeah. that that say 
uh, uh, Billy will be uh, away, at is away at college now, and, uh, and we have a special that, <laughs> that he can get with a pancake, you know, uh, 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 on this, uh, pan uh, they call it large. Yeah, uh, pancake, uh, yeah. Pancake, uh, uh, pan. Right. Yeah. It's a bigger uh, cake, They had yeah. a cake that will have his name and uh, and there'll be uh, candles on it. Always the entrepreneur. And there'll be a picture of the gang later on that you'll get afterwards, and you'll see he and <laughs> and and uh, uh, and his gang blowing the candles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. For eighty, you know, for uh, uh, you know, I think about uh, uh, twenty dollars or twenty oh, twenty five dollars. But it was like a con job, but yeah. I mean, it it worked. You know, I, I mean, that. it I made money. And the furniture thing, you stumbled upon that. You, helped, you helped out the, the grounds crew um, changing water for the grass oh, yeah. in different sections. But then you said there's a big barn there that had old furniture from previous students just yeah. stacked in the barn. And you, they were going to throw it away at the school oh, every no. semester. No. So what you do is you brought some of the furniture back to your dorms. You'd sell a chair and a lamp and things like that. Oh, yeah. So I had... <sighs> I, don't uh, I don't know how you do uh, that. Uh, 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 I would make $600 clear, <laughs> clear, you know, afterwards. Uh, you have a bank account before you went home? Uh, my, my bank account <laughs> would, would go right up, nice. you know. But I mean, uh, and you still uh, ran though. You still ran because I did yeah. want. I did want to point out there you are again, uh, indoor meat with uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And those were old, nice old, old leather, ancient. Yeah. Uh, that be that, and I was the one that uh, that pushed to get Adidas shoes. Oh, did you? We oh, got that's right. them. We were early. We were an early uh, thing because everyone goes, "Where'd you get those yeah. shoes?" And you, you would know? get new ones because of of. Uh, winning and who you were yeah but they were tough because your ankle still hurt oh yeah so they were rubbing it you needed a worn yeah. shoe kind of thing yeah but in um you actually in your sophomore year against missouri you won your first ever mile yeah in a, in a meet record for 16.8 you won that meets half mile in a meet record and notre dame indoor record at 155 yeah um, and then in indiana you beat um in the, the mile you won in a notre dame indoor track record of 413.7 you beat Greg Rice's 20-year-old record. Yeah. So in addition to the fun time with the cakes and furniture, you actually were doing very yeah. well. Yeah. T say a little bit about um, the multiple events you kept doing in all the track meets. You did from three to five events in a meet. So you couldn't really push hard in the mile all the time. No. And you said you, you could even taste blood a little bit. I wouldn't see oh, it, but yeah. you would, because you your heart valve it. was yeah. so small, yeah. Yeah. you'd be pushing yourself hard for three, oh. four uh, events a oh, mile, um, yeah. It, track me. That had to have been. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, the thing was, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, I, uh, the way they had it was, the mile was, at the end, uh, of the uh, day. Uh, at the end of the day, the half mile would be your release. I'd run the half mile. I'd be on the. Uh, I'd be on the four by. Uh, the four by one mile relay. Right. I'd come back in the middle the two uh, with the two mile yeah. re relay. And those are distances and go too. To the, hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you know, uh, and 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 at the end I'd run the mile, and then and 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 I wanted to run my fastest time in the mile, and I'd you know, I'd work it up, and I knew that it. Uh, if, if I uh, if I'd go to a, uh, an open meet, and finally uh, they started sending me mm. all kinds of uh, so I got like I got this is the truth I got 42, 42 uh, 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 different uh, college outfit coaches yeah. were you know, had sent you know material to my. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do squires do for training? Are you sure he's not, you know, at that time, taking any kind of dope or anything mm. else? How was he running? See, I, I was running to do what twelve you did. and thirteen yeah. minutes, yeah. not seconds. And in the mile, you were going against guys like Wes Santee, uh, Ron Delaney, Ron Delaney, Dellinger, Bill Dellinger. Yeah, 
Uh, you going against high, and then all the uh, with, animals, with these miles, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it used to be at the yeah. end of the meet. <laughs> yeah, so that I mean, you still did. I, I yeah. don't know how I did that. Yeah, but you actually simultaneously held at Notre Dame the indoor mile, outdoor mile, and the mile relay record. You did yeah, the anchor and the I mile at the same those, time. Yeah. That was yeah. amazing. You did about twenty. You set about twenty cross country and track records at Notre Dame. Phenomenal. Yeah, uh, it well, just a, I mean, you had that talent in you. Thanks to Charlie Leveron getting you into running. Yeah, oh um, no, Charlie yeah. was the. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got you into that football. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, uh, he always now, used to say, you know, that was the thing. It's, yeah, he got you. He used to say, if it wasn't for, wasn't for Squires, <laughs> uh, he would he'd be still doing that uh, uh, basketball, baseball, <laughs> instead the hockey of, uh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hockey deal and. And he kept thinking, oh, I love hockey more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, where's hockey you going to go? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're not a Canadian, so uh, what And you wouldn't have went to Notre Dame on hockey. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, now, you went into the Army in Germany. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of interesting things there. While you were in Germany, you continued your mile. Um, you actually wanted to go to England on a leave. Uh, you know, during uh, get a, a one week pass to learn about running. Yeah, you started to right. formulate. Uh, as a runner, what would work, you started to get some coaching ideas without even knowing it. Because mm -hmm. as you always said, not all runners have the overall uh, approach to look at training and things. You started to build on that. So you wanted to learn more about running, and you went to England because they were the best right then. And you mm -hmm. went to Paddington Grounds specifically mm -hmm. and uh, got to talk to Derek Ibbotson, uh, an Olympian and everything, and learned a lot there. Um, he said something interesting to you about seasons that – we run, Americans run an extra season, I think it was, um, of running, and that burns us out because they, they yeah, pace they, it differently. The indoor, they thought the indoor season was, uh, you know, at the beginning, they, 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 they thought cross-country season and then outdoor season. That's right, that's right. They, and it was they, too much to get the whole thing. They said it was right. too much uh, on, uh, uh, on your body. You know, oh, that, that that will wear your body out and all that, you know. But, uh, uh, and they always, uh, you know, claimed that, you know, they said only the adults can be able to do that, you know. But uh, but uh, when I got in there and started beating some of the college kids, yeah. and then, you know, uh, uh, and then other people said to their own coaches, hey, uh, he's there and... Uh, and I, I've hit this time like I ran 4:45, and you know uh, I think I ought to have a shot. You yeah. know, uh, you know, and I kind of changed a lot of uh, thinking. Yeah, he know. explained a lot, which was, and I think you mm -hmm. were initially doing it as an athlete, but I think subconsciously, or maybe you started thinking about it as a coach. So I think when Derek Ibbotson started talking to you about things, you were applying that. Yeah, as a as sort of a coach athlete, I mean, because you really you ran a lot of international meets while you were in the army. One of the uh, oh, great yeah. ones was in um, Athens at the great stadium uh, yeah. that the 19, uh, 1896 Olympic modern yeah. games were held. Um, this picture here is of you with Tim Kilduff, who's the founder oh, yeah. of the twenty six point two foundation oh, yeah. in Hopkinton, and yeah. Dimitri uh, Kiriakaitis, yeah. whose father Stylianos won oh, the yeah. nineteen forty six Boston Marathon. Yeah. Yeah, you have an interesting story when you competed in the you know mecca in Athens, Greece, yeah. in the original stadium. Stylianos came up and talked to you because in the program it had Bill yeah. Squires, Boston, because it's the closest city. Yeah. And then several years later, you met Dimitri Stylios' son. Make, yeah. Talk a little bit about meeting Stylios, you know, uh, oh, back yeah. in and then Greece. Well, the thing is, you know, you you you, you meet these uh, uh, you know personalities and you find out. Uh, you know, they or their or their children. You know, uh, we we thought we did pretty well in America, but we uh, we didn't understand the uh, the foreign system right. and, and and how they had nurtured the people by by fifteen. They were already actually on a national. Program. Yeah, you learned a lot when you were talking about a lot yeah. of the, uh, the people in different countries about that. Yeah, Stelios was telling you a little bit about that. Um, and then I remember what you saying when you finally met Dimitri, his son, several years later. Dimitri told you 
I was going to go to that meet, but I was young and dad didn't want me to skip school or yeah. something. And he, uh, you said Stelius actually went home after that, that meet in, uh, in Greece and told Dimitri he met someone from Boston because of the great Boston Marathon. I mean, he just won Boston like six years earlier, six or seven, uh, no, probably about seven, or eight years earlier than that. So that was interesting meeting him. Um, yeah. But the good point you bring up, learning about the different coaching aspects of not just the American system in the 50s at this time, mm -hmm. but the European system. Uh, your first coaching was at Wakefield High School, mm -hmm. and you actually went 71 and 6, mm -hmm. and you won two cross country state titles, an indoor track state title, an outdoor track state title. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you went to Boston State College, which became the University of Massachusetts mm -hmm. at Boston. Uh, and there, you went two, 274 wins and 84 losses oh, yeah. with 49 team titles, 16 All Americans, three NCAA championships, and you were named Coach of the Year. Um, three times. Here's a photo here of the 1964 cross country champions. Oh, yeah. um, it's uh, from left to right is Al Marston, John yeah. Buxton, Frank yeah. McCarthy, yeah. Uh, John Hickey, Stratos yeah. Velikas, Andrew yeah. DePaulo, yeah. Jerry Blake, and uh, Mike Granfield. Yeah. Um, obviously, with you there on, on the left. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about both state. I mean, you really started to formulate at Wakefield on a high school level, but now with collegiates. Yeah. Well, a higher level of ability. Um, a lot of your coaching from your trial and error as a runner, I remember you saying adamantly, I know what works and doesn't work based on what didn't work with me yeah. when I had a Canadian Olympian coach be a Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. I know what doesn't work, guys. I know what does work mm -hmm. to a point. Mm -hmm. And you used it very well. What are some of the things that you really brought as a coach, or, as a coach to uh, the collegiate level that maybe changed from high school? You did introduce groups. Well, Your okay. famous group one, group two, group three. That right, that, right. That was well, huge. Uh, the big thing was trying to find uh, uh, talent down in the uh, ele uh, in the uh, junior high. Mm. In the junior high, you know, you, you, you uh, they'd have upwards to like the half mile run, the quarter mile run, and and uh, you know field events and so forth, and then. I uh, I try to induce uh, you know uh, uh, in, in, induce a uh, half mile mm. and lower and a three quarter mile at a yeah. lower you know uh, so when they got into high school all of a sudden uh, Arlington became a, 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 a you know a, a school to beat yeah. And then, uh, try, uh, and right, when then, you decided to coach in high school and then college. Yeah. And I do remember saying, especially in college, as you built up in high school, but in college, the one, two, three, top three winners of, of events in high school and stuff would go to a Division One college. Oh, yeah. Uh, you couldn't, uh, both state didn't have a track. Yeah. Didn't have, so you really hadn't, didn't have much to offer. So you went to the guys who were in the middle. Yeah. And would build them up. Instead of getting the, the, the first, second, third place winners in a lot of things, you would get mm -hmm. the guys in the middle and say, you know, I'll work on those guys and build them up, which yeah. is kind of what you did in high school, Arlington, Wakefield, and you started doing it at Boston State mm -hmm. and really started to formulate them because they just needed that next step. So with your group one and your group two, you, you said they always did the same training, but for their ability. A different attempts. Yeah. And that's all. And, and, uh, and uh, the only thing was with my athletes, you're not about to – uh, give any press guy what we do for workouts. Mm. The only thing is we run distance and we run speed two day, uh, three days a week. Let them, and they'll go, well, what do you do? Oh, coach has different things. They're all different each time. Don't give a the lot secrets of times away. <laughs> where you, they, they were all build up. Right. So the thing was, but uh, they're not out to print. And after a person graduates from our, you know, uh, from our high school, we want you to say, hey, uh, you know, we're going to help you get into a college or we'll, uh, uh, you know, mm. and that's what we'll, what we'll do. And they all excelled. And I, yeah. At that level, which was oh, amazing. Yeah. You also yeah. brought that over. I remember... Um, you actually went to, you would help out around this time, the U.S. State Department. You would go as a coach and a consultant and teach 
uh, and coach and instruct athletes and coaches in, in different countries. Yeah. One of them was India. We have a photo of you in India here yeah. in 1971. Yeah. Um, and it was great because you would have printouts. You would print out a whole program. Some of these gentlemen were in the 70, at this point, 72 and 76 mm -hmm. Olympics. Um, probably from middle distance to marathon, yeah, I think yeah, you yeah. did, uh, which, was, which you brought to them all the kind of techniques, train for yeah. what you're going to run, things like mm -hmm. that. But there is a funny non-running story I want you to, to tell. Uh, when you first arrived in India, um, you checked in the hotel, splashed your face with cool water, went to went for a walk, and you went to the red light. And you say, in India, you red don't pay light. attention to the lights. You don't cross. You don't jaywalk like we do here. A, what happened when when you were uh, at the red light, just waiting to cross with everyone else? Uh, I'm walking across this big main street, and there's there's about 150 to 200 people on one side and another 150, and the minute the light would flash, it was like a, one would go, boom, you know, yeah, would the go. groups of people and would just walk. And group yeah. of people, yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, well, in front of you the was next a woman. thing I know, <laughs> I get, boom, on my chest, and it was like, boom. A little bit. And, and it's a baby, and it's a baby like, you know, no more than a, Probably about uh, an infant. A, a year and a half. Because a woman was standing in front of you with the baby, and you yeah. were making googly eyes at yeah, the baby because yeah. she was facing you yeah. the shoulder, and you gave her a few dollars or whatever the, the I gave currency her a was, just to be yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Light went red. She handed you the baby and took off. <laughs> and oh, what did you do? She took off, and then you, uh, then there was you know everyone's crowding across. One's going you know my <laughs> way. And then you got all these uh, villages and uh, people the trying to think. The, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going. Uh, I got this. I got this little baby. So you're running, holding the, like holding yeah, the baby, with running, a baby chasing in my after hand. her. Yeah. In the marketplace, you finally pulled oh, on an officer. Yeah. And they went. You went to the police station. And yeah. What did, the, what did the captain say? Well, captain said, uh, 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 "What happened?" And I said. A woman gave me this baby. Can you take care of it? I go, no, no, it's not my baby. I go, no. You have your own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, he goes, no, you don't, you're not like a baby. I go, no, wonderful baby. <laughs> I go, I don't want to insult the guy, yeah. you know. And he can speak like, you know, kind of broken of English. English yeah. and, and I'm going, oh, geez, what am I going to do? And I go, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, so he said, how long you here? And I said, oh, since yesterday, 30 hours. You know, I was there, you know, 30 hours. You were there about, you had left, but you had been in India for about 30, 40 minutes. You just arrived. That's all. Yeah, yeah, you just arrived, splash your face and just like that. Yeah. And he said that the, the woman thought you were buying the baby. Yeah. Because it was a common thing, unfortunately, in that area. Yeah. And you were just being funny and just getting money. And yeah. I go, I didn't know that you could you could <sighs> buy or sell if you, if a woman lost a, a yeah. child and then you could and and they said the poor people would would sell their babies yeah. uh, because uh, some of the people couldn't. You couldn't afford uh, couldn't in afford them. the babies are are are, are you that was know. unfortunate oh Jesus yeah yeah um so that's 1971 so 1973 um yeah. Greater Boston Track Club has a photo of you at BC I think Greater Boston Track Club uh, began at Boston oh, College yeah. 1973 Jack yeah. McDonald a BC student athlete wanted to start it, uh, about six or seven athletes yeah um as uh, just to continue post collegiate track. You focused on the relays, the demolition derby at the Millrose Games in New York, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, talk a little bit about how that began. It's, it, you and a lot of your coaching styles really formulated very well for Greater Boston because now yeah. you had adults, you weren't high school uh, or college kids in Greater Boston Track Club. You were still coaching at Boston State, so you, you did both at the same time. Um, but it was interesting that they knew what they wanted. They were very yeah. focused. This is not act, this is not school related. This is us. We want a club, Greater Boston Track Club, and you really excelled with the relay. You really pulled in your group one, your group two, your group three uh, training. I'd program. have three. I'd have three, three, uh, three uh, uh, groups going on a weekend, mm. and I, you know, one would, uh, one would, uh, one would be the, 
uh, eventually they'd want to move up from three to two to one. And, uh, and they knew the kids that went up to one would end up probably going to the national championships mm -hmm. or, uh, or uh, being big city very, race. very yeah. good, you know, uh, and get scholar athletes, you know, awards. And then the other, uh, the, uh, the, uh, other, uh, the other deal was I had, uh, I had uh, uh, my two assistant coaches, one, in, uh, one doing, uh, doing field, of, uh, field events, and we kept the field events only in, uh, only in five categories. Yeah, you focus more on the track, relays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the demolition yeah. derby uh, at the Mineral Games is basically about 30, yeah. 40 runners. Yeah. Gun goes off. It's like a road race on the track. Yeah. It's like a. Yeah. You just process of elimination, whoever fits. It's just huge. Yeah. But it gets your nose bled, as you say. Yeah, oh, yeah. You knew you're going to lose for second or third or fourth, but it's a good competition against some high uh, caliber athletes in New York and everything. Um, and you excelled very well in the relays. And then um, a lot of your athletes, including Bill Rogers, who joined, started to expand the scope of Greater Boston to longer distances like marathons. Mm -hmm. Alberto Salazar out of Wayland High. Uh, even Bob Hall, the wheelchair athlete, oh, talked to you about the, uh, um, doing the, the marathon. Actually, actually, he won the uh, National Mile Wheelchair yeah. Championship. And then you helped coach him at the Boston Marathon as the first official finisher, which really began the wheelchair division, which is yeah. tremendous. Um, but talk a little bit. Here's Bill Rogers in 1975 Boston Marathon that he won with the Greater Boston. Oh, yeah. Handwritten yeah. Greater Boston Track Club Boston mm -hmm. uh, T-shirt and everything. Um, a lot of the training from Greater Boston was on the Boston course. It was. So these it. guys loved it. They picked it right up. Uh, yeah. And that's where they would take care of, uh, yeah. of yeah. the athletes. So talk a little bit about what this race really did. It put you on the map. It actually expanded the scope. You had to decide, are we a track club now? Are we uh, long distance? Are we both? You know, growing yeah. pains of that. But this really, I mean, him running the whole yeah. thing with GBTC on the T-shirt. But Well, the thing, uh, 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 we became uh, a middle distance, long distance uh, club. And, we, uh, and the, the, the thing was, after, uh, uh, by my third year, we were nationally known. We were finishing always in the top three to four place. Yeah. We never, never went, you know, went uh, past the fourth place, and uh, and uh, uh, it was normal for us to leave Boston at at uh, 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 at uh, six thirty or seven in the morning. And be running in the Murrows games mm. that evening, and you know, long uh, days. Uh, I mean, you know, at the beginning, you know, it was just uh, a one day, almost a uh, a day and a half yeah. uh, uh, when we'd be back home again, and then and then then we uh, would get expense money uh, because to the, help out the, the travel. indoor meets yeah. uh, for travel. Got bigger and bigger, yeah. and we were, uh, we were was uh, 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 people wanted to beat the big Boston. We're going to beat that big. But well, they Boston would request team. you guys. I mean, how satisfied was it to see your coaching techniques work? Mm -hmm. To see a Bill Rogers win, to see a Randy Thomas yeah. win in uh, Japan or, or other yeah. other yeah. things. To see Salazar excel, yeah. to see Bob Hodge do Hodge, so well. Yeah. Uh, Dick uh, yeah. Mahoney. It, it's great. As a coach, it has to be just very satisfying because yeah. it, it clicked. It worked. They knew yeah. the program. Yeah. Uh, they knew all these things along the Boston uh, course. Um, I know some of the training. This is a Newton Wellesley Lower Falls before you get to uh -huh. mile 16. Oh, yeah. You were showing the guys the, the famous example mm. of you brought the guys up on a Sunday. And yeah. You, you top runners. Yeah. On the little hill here, the first really hill before Route 128. Yeah. With a tennis ball, you drop the tennis ball, the tennis and you see guys visually. The tennis ball. Yeah, see where that went. Watch, watch the way the street runs. You know, and then for your less resistance, you're cutting on, the I'd tangents. have them. I, 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 I'd have them instead of, uh, you know. I said I want you, you know, the, the, 
the route goes down this hill, but we're going to do a half mile along a side road that's the same road. And look how it drops. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe yeah, the it elevation drops difference. Like yeah. That. <laughs> I said, yeah, and that's why every everyone's tired. Their their legs. It works on the to, legs. Well, legs. Heartbreak Hill does that. Yeah. Here's the top of Heartbreak Hill at Boston yeah. College, yeah. Gaston Hall. The top yeah. of Heartbreak Hill, because you yeah. would train your guys to use those hills. Yeah. You know, there's flats in between mm -hmm. the hills. People forget. So you rest on the flats. You, uh, yeah. I mean, you rest on the hill. You push on the flats. Yeah rest on the hill, push on the yeah. flats, and you really shred the guys if there's someone in second and third uh, ne next to you. Yeah. By the time you get here on top of the hill, because this yeah. is where Greater Boston Track Club basically started, mm -hmm. was right down here near Lake Street, mm -hmm. right, right beyond Lake Boston Street. College. Yeah. They love that. I mean, it, um, they really got to that kind of training that they pulled together. Mm -hmm. um, this photo uh, from 1979, the, finally the national cross country title, with Alberto yeah. Salazar, Salazar was in yeah. first. There's Dan Dillon, number yeah. three, another yeah. right there, number one yeah. uh, was Greg Meyer. Meyer, um, yeah. Talk a little bit about that because that was a pinnacle. Salazar won that one in 1979. Yeah. Bob Hodge was third. Dan third. Dillon was fourth. Dan, Dan Greg Dillon. Meyer was fifth, and Randy Thomas was twelfth. Twelfth, yeah. For the point getters. That was the lowest uh, any national lowest point, championship. Yeah. Uh, you know, in you know, uh, uh, you know, in uh, modern history yeah. ever load. I mean, one, uh, three, four, five, twelve. That's yeah. <laughs> well, we had uh, yeah. Uh, to think would uh, w would have five guys that would uh, be, that could be running within a, yeah. a th uh, uh, all under three minutes. Unreal. And they go, uh, you know, at that time they go, what the heck? Yeah. And your two guys. Yeah. Who didn't finish in top five became Olympians. Pete Fitzinger and, uh, and Bruce Bickford. And Bickford. And so Bruce Bickford, yeah. Talk about the, I mean that's. <laughs> I mean they were uh, you know, and 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 uh, one of those years or two of those years, uh, the Olympics were called uh, uh, cold off, and and my and the kids got been a peak, yeah. the, they got a, the real shafting, yeah. you know, as far as. You this know, is 79, so you're leading yeah. up to the 80. Yeah. And as a coach, you say you train months or a year ahead for those kinds of games, mm -hmm. those kinds of events. Oh, yeah. You train specific. You know that. Down mm -hmm. the road, you have that down yeah. the road. Um, this is interesting. Here's you in, out in front of the Elliott Lounge. Um, oh, the Elliott Lounge. Which is no longer there. It's, it was in the Elliott Hotel. It's kind of the unofficial uh, clubhouse headquarters of Greater Boston. You had your coach's corner seat at the bar where Tommy Leonard... Uh, was the official uh, bartender, official greeter of the Boston Marathon. But this is great because I remember Mark Duggan um, showed me here. This is a write-up of how you would write up workouts. Oh, you yeah. You would use oh, the yeah. Elliott Lounge napkins, the back of oh, envelopes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why did you do that? Why did you write it on scraps of papers and things? Oh, a lot of the stuff, I, a lot of the stuff, uh, number one, uh, the kids were held to their own that they would not Give it to the press. Yep. The press is, couldn't be yeah. our friend and our enemy. You didn't yeah. want it like all a nice sheet of paper to hand out. You wanted on little yeah. scraps that people would tend to throw yeah. out. You didn't yeah. want. Yeah. You didn't put it all on white, nice yeah. little thing like that. <laughs> yeah. But I love that. I love that about the Elliott yeah. Lounge. The people started thinking yeah. about that. Um, here's a great picture of you with uh, a lot of the, this is the Boston Marathon event that the Greater Boston oh. Track Club was honored. Uh, from left to right, you have Greg oh, Meyer, boy. Bob Hodge, Dick Mahoney. Uh, it is you, Coach Alberto Salazar, Brad Hurst, and Vin Fleming. Uh, I mean, the guys are great. I mean, because you're competing <laughs> against everyone who's so top, and if you don't win that, you're that much better to win somewhere else. I mean, I remember a lot of the guys were saying that, because yeah, I may not be able to beat Bill Rogers in Boston, but because I'm training in Group 1, and I'm within top 5, yeah. top 10, I can win Detroit. I can win something else, yeah. because you're just at that higher level. Um, one of the guys that you really got... Is Dick Beardsley and you um, yeah. for the 1982 Boston Marathon? Um, he came in second to Alberto Salazar, but the two of them in a duel in the sun. Oh yeah. Uh, you said he just soaked up everything. I mean, he was in Minnesota and he came to Boston a few times to train. Yeah. You really monitored him. He did everything you said. I mean, everything. Talk a little bit about yeah, Dick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, yeah. he was he, just uh, yeah perfect was, athlete for that. Yeah. 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 Tell me a little bit about when you when. Um, um, 
Dick Beardsley did well in '82, um, but he he did, he didn't have any hills to do in Minnesota, and you brought him into Atlanta to do the heat. But when he came to Boston in March to do some specific Boston Marathon training, there was like a big storm the, yeah. the weekend that you were planning it, yeah. and you were going to postpone it. He could nah, if in Minnesota, I can deal with it. Yeah. So there was like nobody on the roads. You went to BC, and he did like I think eight, if I remember correctly, eight five mile. Or maybe six five mile repeats up and down up hot and break down, hot on break, both yeah. sides. Yeah, I think in the snow. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that because you were getting coffee with the MBTA guys, and you guys are the only ones there going. You guys are crazy. Who's, what's this guy doing? But talk to me a little bit about his dedication and just you know the way Dick Beardsley loved your kind of training and love. Didn't he say he would call you at night and he goes, "I have to stop calling you to give you my updates because I hang up the phone and I'm, yeah. I'm ready to run." Ah. <laughs> He goes, we get so excited, you know, because yeah. he just loves that. But he was like, he was like a perfect athlete for your system. He just, uh, there were others as well, but he went from, you know, I don't want to say ground zero, but as a marathoner, uh, you really gave him that whole foundation. He loved yeah. it. He really got, he, he, he took to it. Did he take to it right from the beginning? Uh, oh, no, no, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was just a, a natural, but uh, he was a kid that uh, would follow every, thing to the you know yeah to the inch yeah. you know which is which is great a lot of kids will do it and miss that miss but none of my kids were uh, were drinkers thank god and none drug druggers you know none yeah. of them were in that area you know and they were in in that area it was some of them would might drink a little bit but the, the drugs were not well, they loved the running they loved the yeah. running the competition the yeah. camaraderie yeah, they lo they loved it. That was their enjoyment. That's where yeah. they got their enjoyment. Was that? Well, the thing was, the the biggest thing I could do would be, uh, I'd have three three groups, the A group, the B group, the C group. Right. Now, uh, the C group would end up probably uh, up in Maine or in Montreal for those events. Yep. The, uh, the 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 uh, B group would probably be in in uh, uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, you know. For those levels. And that level, and then the national group would be anywhere. Be be. Uh, uh, we eventually got uh, got out to yeah, the West Coast. Where, where they pick up our, you know, pick up our, you know, there's money out there. You'd be invited. And be invited yeah. out. Oh, we're going to beat these guys, yeah. guys, you know. And then, uh, and uh, uh, that was all I needed. And then. Well, they wanted to uh, compete against yeah. the best. I remember Tommy Leonard saying once you brought the horses down the Falmouth Road Race, other people wanted to, as a top athlete, you want to compete against the best. A lot of the athletes started going. We got to go to Falmouth. It's a great yeah. course, but we also want to beat the Bill Rogers, the Randy Thomases, those guys. Yeah, you know, we want to beat those guys. Want to beat them? Yeah. And everywhere around like that. So the Boston Marathon really started that. Yeah. Um, here's a picture of you crossing the finish line. I took this a few years ago. Oh God! Um, look at well, that. Well, you're almost in the finish line. I'm Asian. <laughs> Holy Christ! That was a few years ago. Oh man, alive! That. Yeah, I love God that. God Almighty. Uh, but some people may not know they have known you run the Boston Marathon. But in 1961, you actually came in 20th place. Yeah. In uh, 247.46. Yeah. That was your first time you ran. Tell me a little bit about just how, uh, as a runner now, coaching yourself, uh, running it must yeah. have been kind of interesting because you're sort of self coaching. Uh, 1961, you had just started to put some of your coaching things together. Yeah. Um, just tell me a little bit about the experience of running that one uh, in 1961. Well, the thing is, uh, uh, yeah, I forget what I, uh, wh where did I finish that? 20th yet? place in two huh? hours, 47 minutes, and 46 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. And you said bad. you could have done a couple of extra spaces, but you misjudged the finish. Huh? You misjudged some of the, the fencing or something because it didn't finish here in, in, in 61. Um, but just running it, how, how was it? Was it like cold, a little cool or something? And Yeah, it was kind of cool. Uh, I think it, uh, it was at the year it was kind of windy or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of windy. And, and windy and war, the, the, the heat didn't bother me. You know, some people it did, but oh, yeah. I, I was never, uh, you know, 
uh, you never, uh, you know, uh, loss. The thing I didn't, uh, I hated was heavy winds. Yeah. You know, winds right at you, you know, on your face or side winds. But, uh, but the thing is, you know, you have to accept it, and they, and your uh, athletes have to. You did well. But, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You also said by running this in 1961, because you you said you would eventually run it anyway at some point in time. But mm -hmm. by running it in 61 really helped you as a coach mm -hmm. in the 70s and the 80s because you had that oh, yeah. personal experience, obviously. Oh, yeah. But it's also o over the Boston course itself, yeah, which helps um, obviously for that. Um, Talk a little bit about some of the um, training techniques you did on the course. There's one called car tag, hmm? which c called car tag, which is you'd have your group one guys running and you'd get in your car and you'd, you would tell them, all right, run at a five, hmm. 10 pace. Yeah. When you see me, I'm yeah. going to yell out the next pace. You're not going to know how far I am. You, you said you'd be between like a quarter mile and maybe a mile and a half, somewhere within there, but you're not going to know when. When you do see me, I'm going to yell out your running fives and then All i right. drive away tell me what why you did that what did that replicate for uh, athletes well uh well the thing was uh, instead i was uh, uh, you know uh, 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 trying to let them know they had to learn a, a, a pace as a group and what they did was uh, i'd have three guys three here start off yeah, they have three more, three, six, nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they'd they'd roam, you know, and change every uh, uh, every cycle. Right. So no one would, and then and then in that tree group, uh, those tree guys would hold hold pace. Yep not race pace and that allowed them to bring up athletes that never had gone mm. pull them along right because you want to replicate yeah. You, yeah. you had simulators you want to replicate simulators. what they were going yeah. to see in a race yeah you'd start out as a group like the kenyans do nowadays the americans mm -hmm. did and you really kind of initiated that because that's how you would push each other but you would see like in intervals or Speed would change throughout a race. Mm -hmm. Well, let me replicate that on the course. Yeah. And you would have something called light to light, where you would run as go from one set of lights to yeah. another set of lights. You would, you would start on the BC track, go on the course, and you would come back and everything. But all these things simulated. There was a purpose for it. Yeah, you do. Don't waste training. You said there was a purpose yeah. for that. Yeah. That you wanted to simulate. You wanted to replicate what you're going to see in the race. Mm -hmm. Train for what you're going to run. And along those courses in Boston, and it worked, and they loved that. Yeah. They, they. I mean, I remember Greg Myers saying he just loved pushing that. Rogers, they just loved doing that. And plus, with the talent level pushing it, as you say, you bring mm -hmm. up guys from Group Two to Group One. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it, to just to do something like that. I think is amazing mm -hmm. to actually put all those elements together for the program. Mm -hmm. You know, because as you say, you would talk about coaches who would have you know like 30, 40, 50 hour training. What are you doing? <laughs> Mm. There's a point like you just doing repetitive. There's a point where it's done. The training is done. The peak, you know, that kind of thing. Um, this is the uh, the cover again with uh, you and uh, Bill Rogers. Uh, I want to close with you. Tell me a little bit about. Uh, we talked about this before about your legacy as a coach. One of the things you're most proud of is that a lot of the runners who you coach became coaches. Yeah, they did. And so on and so on. So talk to me a little about how proud that that must make you feel and. You didn't set out to do that, but you started seeing that there's a there's a time that you had forty or fifty former runners coaching mm -hmm. from Division three, II, Division two, II, Division one, high school, and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me how satisfying that is. I know you weren't looking for a legacy, but it's got to be very rewarding to see that. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, I uh, uh, all I told them I said, look, you, uh, the material that I have taught you, I want you to utilize, mm. but I don't want you to uh, give it to a guy in the press and he's going to, he's going to, he's going to write it down. Yeah. And then that, Everyone's that becomes see it. a wet newspaper, but you gave away a formula and you don't give, 
Yeah, the pharmacist will never give away the formula, not allow it to. <laughs> but you're going to give it away. Right, right. And, and, and you're going to give it away for zip. So what you're going to do is, you know, you, you know, fine. But if someone, you know, some colleague asked you, <laughs> hey, how do you do this? Well, we do a little... You know, just a little, a, a little yeah. of that and a little of this and yeah. that. And and that's all you do? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go, <laughs> hey, Clyde, what do you think I'm going to give away the Yeah, I'm going to write down everything and go, here's yeah, what yeah, we do. Give, yeah, give it, I go, get out of here, would you? Yeah. I don't want to say, hey, don't, be, don't think I'm a rube. You know, <laughs> I didn't get off the boat last week. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that's what I that's what I, I love uh, knowing about you, the coaching. I mean, you can go, the connection that you have all the way from, say, you know, Doc McCarthy at Arlington, who coached yeah. you high school. Yeah. Alex Wilson, a Canadian Olympian yeah. coach at Notre yeah. Dame. Derek Ibbotson helps you in England. You started yeah. learning a lot of things and yeah. all the European stuff. Yeah. Then you started incorporating all of that in. Now, you took a little bit of Doc, a little bit of Alex, yeah. a little bit of Derek, right. and made right. it into Coach, coach Squires. Then you had uh, people like Bob Seventy and Salazar and a lot of the other guys who would take a lot that they learned and work to them and put their thing uh, on it. And then their athletes, some of them have been coaching. Yeah. So that lineage has to be, uh, I, I still marvel at that, 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 that you did continue that. So um, I'll end with that because I, I, it's still continuing. I, I do appreciate that um, to see runners excel based on something that um you know that uh, bob 70 started that you started that ebbets i mean you can go all the way back and that's how and mm -hmm. even alex wilson doc mccarthy learned from someone mm -hmm. so it's it's and that was the biggest thing that you said about giving back to the sport that's a huge part of it to continue for that mm -hmm. so i do want to thank you coach for spending time um again uh born to coach i think is pretty apropos yeah um you know so i think it's yeah. uh, amazing so um I do want to thank everyone for uh, joining us. Again, I'm Paul Clarice, uh, and again, I want to thank uh, Coach uh, Bill Squires, and I uh, hope to see you guys on the road. Mm -hmm.